It's basically the same routine every day. You wake up, you eat, you clean your rooms, you program, and it's a lot. It could be tension sometimes between other youth, but you get through it every day by day. If I'm going through some pain or I feel happy or excited about something, I put that into music. And when we got introduced to this program, it's like a it's like a big wake up call for everybody because you know we don't really get things like that here. So like being able to have access to a whole studio and artists that come in and help us is it's amazing because like we what other juvenile hall do you hear about getting this stuff? You know, like I'm just glad that we got this opportunity because. It really did a lot for us, and it really helped a lot of kids cope with what was going on that they haven't talked about for a while. They just let it bottle up, you know? I mean, not everybody gets this. Not everybody in other juvenile halls have this opportunity, so we got to take this and run with it and do the best we can with it. I think that these type of programs should should be everywhere, to be honest, because, I mean, it really helps students. Like, I mean, to me, music is art, and it's really amazing to me how certain people can take a certain way they feel and just write a whole song about it and you could feel that pain or you could relate to it. I just think that they should have this at more schools, more juvenile halls, wherever it may be, because it'll really help out a lot of kids. I see rapping not only as it's for fun, but telling my story and telling and putting my emotions down on paper. This actually has people gives people a chance to have fun at school and I, I learned a lot about how other people felt about police brutality about poverty, about growing up, about gang violence. I've learned a lot from other youth. I really hope that this song just reaches out to everyone and has a positive impact, you know, and just brings attention to everyone, what goes on in certain communities. I would say to my own words, it's not too late for a change. It's not too late to talk. It's not too late to speak up. It's not too late to to ask for like your forgiveness, to pray. I feel like it just it's just not too late to do things. That's how I feel it would be. And I want the world to actually how they say equal, I want us to all feel equal and I just see people for color and instead of discriminating somebody, but see people for how, how they actually are. Not for their past, but how they're ch trying to change. Thank you everyone. My name is Liz Norris and I am in kind of a a weird hybrid sort of role at Kings County Office of Education. I like to call it the best job ever because I am principal at our juvenile detention school, which is JC Montgomery, but I'm also a consultant with Ed and we get to go out into the districts and work directly with teachers and students. And I'm our visual and performing arts person. We're a very small county. We're right in between Fresno and Bakersfield. And we have been doing this work at our site for the last two years. Um, I had dropped earlier in the chat a link on how we're funded in these types of schools. All schools are primarily funded on average daily attendance, which they pull in October, your average daily attendance. And then that's your funding for the next year. So ours for this year is 24 students, even though we see well over 100 students a year. Um, but we've been able to use some of the COVID funding that we've gotten really creatively and we've been able to bring and implement this Stories with Style project at our site. So if you have those social emotional learning dollars, if you have that, you know, learning loss mitigation funding coming in, these types of projects bringing in these types of artists, um, we have found to be the way to go. Yeah, one of the one of the big pieces uh, when Liz and I started uh, last year was making sure to bring in uh, some professional artists uh, that do hip hop. I'm, I'm a huge fan of hip hop. I feel like I've been studying it. I feel like I got a minor in it or double major in college, but I don't have bars. You know, I'm, a, I'm just a student of the lyrics. So I look, I'm lucky that I have a lot of friends. Uh, the crew runs deep for sure. And I do know people who do it. Uh, who, who are a part of the culture. So I was able to pull, uh, we had a visual component to our Stories with Style. We wanted students to be able to tell their stories uh, through the different elements of hip hop as much as we can. We haven't worked, weaved in break dancing yet, but I'm gonna use that yet. There's a power of yet. Uh, but for the visual aspect, I brought in a friend of mine, Eric Gonzalez, who started a nonprofit called the Urbanists Collective. Uh, he has, uh, they do urban art, uh, education, murals, uh, 
uh, social justice murals in Fresno, based out of Lindsay here in California. They also have one in Washington. So we brought him in, uh, him and one of his uh, other graffiti artists, uh, Joanna, came in and uh, led a sticker project for this persona aspect uh, as we were having students uh, create their artist persona that would be turned into stickers. I don't have the actual water bottle, but we got stickers with their logos that they, they get to get a uh, package when they receive, uh, when they leave the facility. And then uh, the, one of the biggest, probably the biggest, uh, per biggest piece of our program is a friend of mine, Josh Levine, uh, AKA Optics. He's a hip hop artist, local hip hop artist that I got to know the last three years, pulled him in. And uh, he's just been instrumental in everything. He's such a creative guy. He does videography work for businesses. So the, the credibility with the students, um, for him to be able to freestyle at the top of a hat, visual freestyler, uh, you know, produce tracks that when they want to vibe, they want, I want a vibe that sounds like this Mozzie beat. And he's like, well, let me see it like this. And then creating the beats, co producing, getting them into the studio right there, the mobile studios that we have, creating the vibe that they want. Uh, letting them, coaching them uh, to to get more creative, pushing them has been pretty amazing. Uh, just and then with Josh being able to show like some of the high quality rap videos he's created, the people he's collaborated with, the commercials that he does just locally, and how he like tells stories for businesses all around our community has been awesome. Uh, so those are two of the awesome uh, three artists that we brought in. And I was also able to bring in, you never know who you're going to meet when you work at TGI Fridays in college. One of the people that I met is Black Aesop from The Living Legends, um, which is based out of the Bay Area. And he lives in Fresno. He's a huge supporter of the art scene in our area. So we brought him also into the project this year. And he really helped us kick it off uh, with a bang. He is on the same label as Mozzie, who is one of our students' favorite current rappers and he was able to get a message from Mozzie, a videotape message to our students. So he just brought in another element of that authenticity. He jumped on some tracks with some students. And so that team, that team of those four teaching artists, plus Ed and I brought this about, it was about a month and a half long project to our students at JC Montgomery. And we had, uh... I, we keep telling the students, I take one of uh, Chris Emden's hip hop teacher moves and the fact that it's uh, we, never I, like you let them know that our team runs deep, that we support them, uh, you know, much like everything like Marlon was just talking about, like our squad runs deep and we reach out, our network is vast to be able to surround these youth uh, with all the opportunities with what they need. And if they, we don't have it, we're gonna reach out for it. I reached out on Twitter to a friend of mine, D Lanier, uh, about the project last year and he connected me with um, a friend of his, Kayla Holland, that works for this organization, BreakFreeEd.organization. They do uh, contests for juvenile justice uh, system across the nation. So we just had, I'll let Liz talk about the one of the programs in particular, but they've got uh, like poetry pro, uh, contest. They've got a cardboard challenge coming up that students across, uh, across different juvenile justice systems can compete in. I'll let Liz talk about uh, this one that, that we're in right now. So they, this organization, this Break Free Ed, they have all the slides and the activities and everything all ready to go for any teacher that's in a juvenile justice setting. And the competition for the month of October is called Unsung. And it's similar to our Stories with Style project in that the students are giving out a message to the community. And so two of our students right now are in the top 10 finalists for their competition. And we'll find out next week who the winner was for that. So that's exciting. And one of the biggest uh, additions to our second iteration that we had last, last year we really focused on the four elements, uh, trying to get them, you know, give them tools to write, to be the MC, to, to do beat making, to make some beats. We didn't really pursue that as much, but Josh has been instrumental in using Soundtrap to help our kids uh, get more creative with beats with when way more students created their own beats this year than last year. And uh, we actually uh, made it a criteria for them for the unsung project that they had to create their own beat. They could not use Josh's uh, you know, professional <laughs> production skills for that. And it's just giving them those uh, those uh, constraints and those these design challenges that we've been giving them. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, like Marlon mentioned, and there, we talked about earlier, like the content, like they start off rapping about 
all the content, everything that happens in their lives. Like, let's talk about that, but let's talk about that in a more creative way. Let's find replacements. So with these design challenges that we've kind of given them, like this is this is the structure, you know, can you step up to the plate? And then we reward them. You know, we definitely have some incentives with some celebrations like a Buffalo Wild Wings celebration. We've got, I got a friend of mine coming in for, you know, bringing some Middle Eastern food uh, in a couple of weeks for a challenge that we're working on right now. But the one thing that I, uh, I, re I was really excited that we added is this fifth element of hip hop, the knowledge of self, looking at um, this idea and, and looking at uh, Dr. Travis's book and his work and his framework really influenced us in pursuing this, steering away from the nine elements that I've heard Cool Herc mention in, in uh, but that, that was a little too much, but the five is just the right amount to chew uh, for our students to not be overwhelming and this knowledge itself of who you are um, to be able to convince, you know, convey in your story who you are there. Uh, so that's been huge. And we have uh, basically they're able to convey once they know about themselves, uh, learning about more about themselves because it is so cathartic. This writing process, this rapping process, just getting them to uh, open up so much more than they would ever open up with in, in just uh, you know another assignment or just even being questioned or even in normal therapy right talking about the therapeutic aspects uh, but we have some of their art that we've also oh yeah so these are a few pieces of the art that they created um eric gonzalez he zoomed in with them but Joanna was actually there in the classroom working with the students, um, the little cute guy that's down in the bottom corner. She did that with one of our middle school students this year and they created it together on an iPad. Um, the other pieces were created on paper originally and then she digitized those for the students. And having those artists come in, having them come work with them, having what Ed's talking about, having us kind of anchor this learning and something familiar in the hip hop in what they know about themselves in their own stories and then twisting that that's a Zaretta Hammond phrase the anchor and twist but we were really pushing the students beyond what what they had done last year which was a lot of individual work we wanted to get them to a place where they started to team up to where they started to feel like their unit was more of a community that was working together to better themselves, to to make to make some community change. And so through that work, we challenged our students to write about a problem in our local community. And they had to do the work collaboratively. They were able to do it with one of the teaching artists, which some of our students did, or they could do it with their peers or a combination of, but they had to work together to tell about the problem they saw in the community. Ed, do you want to add anything else to that before I push us forward? Yeah, I just, uh, that I, this idea of Zaretta Hammond's anchor and twist, I was really fortunate to have a phone, uh, Zoom call with Zaretta Hammond, um, where she, uh, I helped her out with some of her work. She, she offered me some advice on our program because I told her about it and she said this anchor and twist idea. And uh, so what we've been doing since that conversation was trying to anchor everything in that knowledge uh, of what they like, even just uh, some of the questions we asked, because I'm more of a 90s hip hop head. I don't know about the stuff nowadays. You know, some of it, most of it, I'm not a big fan of. So I'm, I was going into it as a learner. Like, what are you what are you all inspired by? We just gave them the prompt. Music has the power to help help us fill in the blank uplift energize me chill me out get in my feelings you know what i mean and and then so based on that we're anchoring that like well what music inspires you what music does get you here you know well polo g he's one of the most inspirational people uh, ever he's better than tupac i was like okay we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that yet or we'll, we'll leave that i'm not gonna i'm gonna leave my facial expression okay neutral for right now but um when we we played some common for them we played i used to love her and they they loved Common. They're like, this guy's flow is sick. And we're like, Shh. so we found out that anchor with Common, with a, with a appreciation for Common as an anchor, we twisted it to Liz showed them glory. And then we twisted it to all of these other dope lyrics from Common. And, and we're able to take them different places and, and take the samples and using the uh, who sampled website to, to twist it to jazz music and, and all this appreciation. So... Uh, we've been using that and continue to use that. One of the projects that I'm currently wrapping up is trying to anchor 
their appreciation and love of hip hop and tap into Kendrick Lamar, uh, trying to teach a mindfulness unit and, and tap into the, uh, the, some quotes and some videos that Kendrick, that um, J. Cole, that Sean, uh, Big Sean have talked about. They have some videos where they really talk about how meditation has helped them. So I've anchored, anchored that in there, looked at some hip hop lyrics and where our students are experimenting. I show them some hip hop uh, meditation by the RZA and by Big Crit from the OK Player website and got them into that. And now they're wrapping up, uh, make create, created their own uh, lo-fi hip hop beats like meditation. I went away from using meditation cause that's not language that they use, but they're like, they, they said, we're gonna make some lofi beats. I said, what are lofi? Oh, say it, lo-fi, okay, lo-fi, yeah. Low fidelity beats. So they made some low fidelity beats and they're using Wii Video to create some chill, uh, really calming uh, visuals. I said, well, what visual goes with this song that, that you got right here? So they're they're just kind of zoning and chilling themselves out, make, making their own stuff. So we're gonna have a playlist of, of lo-fi, uh, a lo-fi YouTube playlist coming up pretty soon when, uh, when I finish it up on Wednesday. And I just wanna say before we show one of our student projects that, you know, this kind of work that's happening in our facility, it's happening in partnership with probation um, deputy director, Dan Luttrell. He is a huge supporter of this work. He goes to bat for us with county council so that we can, you know, bring people in, let the students get their stories told publicly. And then I also have a superintendent and an assistant superintendent, superintendent Todd Barlow, and then my boss, assistant superintendent Joy Santos, who let me take my budget and be creative with it. Um, everybody thinks Ed is a teacher at my site and he really at this point has become one. They let me contract all of the days that he has with the county pretty much to come work with our youth because of the relationship he has with them. So it's definitely the right time, the right space, the right people all working together for these kids. And we just feel so lucky to be able to do this work. So what we'd like to end with is the 2021 challenge winner. Um, a lot of our other student projects are on our YouTube, but the students who the teaching artists selected as having best met the challenge that we laid down to write about a problem in our community, they had a video that was filmed, um, edited, produced by Josh Optics Levine. And so that is this project and we're very happy to share it with you. Stand on the one threshold which leads into the palace of justice in the process of gaining our rightful place we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred we must rise to the majestic heights Meeting physical force with soul Ready for school, finna slap J. Cole, cause that's just my mood. Sitting at the table, finna eat my food. When I'm done out the door, now I'm up on the move. I gotta check my phone, scroll through these texts. My friend shot me a link. I was sleeping in sin, so I open it up just to see what it is. Another cop out of control, beating the kid. So I close it up, I don't wanna stay to the end. I guess success of force just becoming a trend. I guess the vest is grand, them another one dead. I guess my head got a target on it now. Cause they seem to only target all the black and brown. Tell us, put our hands up, then they put us down. Yeah, then they put us down. Tell us, put our hands up, then they Put it down, put my earbuds in, tuck them under my shirt. Join the Lucas, I'm not racist, repeat for sure. Goddamn, there's a cop car ahead of the church. What should I do? Go back, I proceed to the curb. Turn the street, there's people, I proceed to the crowd. Hard thumping up the music, just to drown out the sound. Get a text, reach forward, and I'm taking it out. Pop, pop, two shots, and I'm down to the ground. Down to the ground, 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 down to the ground. Pulling out of the 
station. I just got back, I was on vacation. Got this bash talking, describing a kid. Drug dealer ran off and he got brown skin. 10 4, can you tell me where we last was seen? Yes, sir, by the church on that one bad street. One more question, does he got a weapon? Unsure, but we know he got some prior possessions. We know he got a backpack full of drugs, guns. We know that in the past he resists, he runs. Proceed with caution, but approach with enough. Do anything you can to get him back in the cuss. Cause we can let it go, let him get away. Gotta put him in the jail so the people safe. So I head to the suspect's last location. Sip my coffee as I sit there waiting. And what do you know? It's the key to my mission. A young brown man that'll fit the description. I call out to him, but he pick up the pace. Turn on another street, trying to hide his face. I trail right behind him, but he up on the move. And now he reaching for his pockets, so and now I just gotta choose. I yell, A stop, two shots, I shoot. And eliminate the threat like we was trained to do. Like we was trained to do. It's not too late. It's not too late for us. It's not too late. That's true. That's why people always hang on the black on the black people see us at the target house that cool every move that we make it's like we in lives we and lauren different never had a place to call our own pray for change pray for help like lord we feel alone it would never get easy it would never be okay we look up in the heavens like lord it needs to change center 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 center's crying police killing our young we can strike we can fight we can put our hands up see the color of our skin man it do this crap for fun first choice in our head is drop it all around one bleak now we go on story make them a thug racial profile i guess we all selling drugs we all selling drugs, selling drugs. Selling drugs. Love. Love. Racial profile, I guess we all selling drugs. Well, I'ma speak up, cause I rain from the streets. It's not too late for change. That's why Rosa took a seat. That's why Martin had a dream. That's why Malcolm had a speech. Put our hands together, pray to God and let him see. I'm not rapping just for fun, man. I'm spinning to teach. Hit the words, copy hands while you listen to this beat. While you listen to this beat, but hit the words, copy hands while you listen to this beat, cause it's not. It's not. Thank you.